our webinar series with a, a little bit of a tweak on AI in general and chat GTP. So we're going to have a series of these webinars coming up over the next few months up to about April. And we've got the first one by Janzin and Peter and Naveen, which they'll explain everything about as we go through. But as per normal, we like to introduce who we are. So we're the Active Learning Special Interest Group. And there is a little link in the chat at the moment if you would like to become um, part of the organizing committee. So please feel free to sign up if you wish. And the link is there. You're very welcome to join us. And there's other information about us over there, the hashtags accordingly. Um, and you can obviously find us on the on alt uh, learning pages and the blogs and other things which are going in there. So this is the first of a of a small series. The only bit of advance notice I'll give you is one that is about to come about, which is Dr. Helen Crompton. Now, she's someone I've known for about 10 years. So I've managed to persuade her to do a chat GTP AI roll up or a, a summary of all of our webinar series on this. And she'll be doing that on April the 8th. So it's a bit of a, and I got her for free. So that was the important thing. Um, and obviously I've just done the advance notice now so that if you're aware of it, you know, you can look her up and so on, but that's event. But we will have others in the next, uh, next couple of months. So watch out for the notices. Um, so I will end that bit and I shall now go in and move into the main presentation for today. And I will pass it over to Yasmin. Yasmin. Okay. Over um, to you. Yeah, yes, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much uh, in uh, introduction. Uh, okay, so um, thank you very much for the, the special interesting group provide this opportunity for us. So, and we are very delighted to have this opportunity to share our some experience and with all of you. Just uh, you mentioned this is a collaborative work with our colleagues, Peter Nico and Navid Kehan. So, um, what I'm going to talk about here, uh, initially, uh, I, I, I want to cover three major aspects. One is uh, talk about the student engagement. So, and um, what we, we can use to try to capture um, understand the student engagement and the second part related to um, challenges from the chat gpt from teaching and the learning perspectives and the third part um the share some experience regarding how to incorporate the machine and uh, learning into teaching activities but unfortunately so and we perhaps don't have much time to talk about the the third part and uh, what I can do, so and I already sent the link to the, the chat box. So and if you are interested, and you can click the, that link to see something shortly. OK. Um, so we are from Austria University. Uh, university, uh, Austria University basically is a multiple campus university across different regions. And uh, we have Belfast campus. This one is based on the Belfast. We have Jordanstown in Jordanstown. And uh, McGee in McGee town and the um, uh, city, Derry city. And also we have the headquarter of the university in Corinne campus. So um, university has a strategy and called the 
people, uh, people, place, and the partnership basically try to unlock the all of the potentials from the three major aspects, build the sustainable future for all of the uh, societies. Things so that's uh, our uh, the university strategy. So and um, everything, the teaching, and uh, learning research, is. Uh, this uh, strategy basically provides the roadmap for us conduct teaching, learning, and research. It is a big umbrella. So where we are, so um, all of us based on Belfast campus, just uh, mentioned now, you can click the link to see where the Belfast uh, campus uh, it is and what it looks like. I give you a few seconds, okay? So can you click that link and to see it? So, this is a new campus and we just moved in so from the last year, from last year. So, and from this, um, the digital and the view and you can look at the different and the part of the campus from Main Street, even to the inside of the building, okay. So um, perhaps if you are interested and you can view it later, okay? So let me to move on the next part. So um, the first, uh, I'd like to see a little bit about the impact of emerging uh, technologies and how this emerging technology affect and the learning behavior. So um, over past years, and higher education actually have been impacted by various challenges. The clearly is a pandemic. So a pandemic disruption and uh, also include some government policy change. I think the important part here is uh, some emerging technology actually is the key driver to lead the we call the digital transformation. So this kind of transformation clearly to see, for example, during pandemic period, and we put all of the things into the online. So, and from the traditional class teaching into the online teaching. So since then, there's a large body of research work talk about the digital pedagogies and talk about the digital curriculum design, did even talk about the digital universities, universities. So, and finally, Python um, in 2021st and the published one and the article. So, and uh, give some uh, clear, give some ideas regarding what it looks like the digital uh, pedagogies. So, and if you are interested and you can look at that, the, the, the article. So, and the reason, and recently, and we have attention, please. Attention, please. Sorry about that. This is the test of the fire and voice alarm system. There is no need to take any action. Oh. I think we will just wait a minute while I think there's a fire alarm going off um, where Yasin's presenting. So if we'll just hold on a, a, a few minutes, it'll it'll come back again. Yeah, there was no need to take any action, apparently. So. Yes. So maybe Peter or Navi, maybe you want to add something here in the gap? They're probably on the campus as well. Oh, of course, yes. It, that doesn't last too long. Oh, yes, you should know, yes, being Ulster, that's uh, fine. Okay. 
Uh, I can first test just over. Sorry about the interruption. So this is our routine test. Okay, sorry. Attention, please. Attention, please. The test of the fire and voice alarm system has now been completed. Attention, please. Attention, please. The test of the fire and voice alarm system has now been completed. Would we have the slides after the presentation? Yes. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, yeah. um, so giving, so, sorry about this, um, giving um, the number of challenges and basically um, we lead to the some kind of hybrid and the teaching and the learning mode at the moment, but uh, not uh, the hybrid. I basically and come back to the physical uh, campus teaching. So, and however, um, during this period of time, so um, teach a uh, uh, number of staff and uh, students already get used to this kind of either online and hybrid teaching environment. So, and that leads to the another question regarding the, what is the student engagement? So how we define the student engagement? Um, so now let me to give you one uh, first case study to talk about our experience regarding the how to analyze the student engagement. So in 19, in 2013, we organized one workshop, mainly dedicated to the understanding relationship between student attendance with attendance. So in that workshop, we invited one keynote speaker and Liz Byrne from Durham University, University of Durham. She uh, did one continuous study and she is the author of the paper and attendance, attainment, and the final year study. So that's uh, published 2006. When we invited her, he, um, she, that's already uh, six, uh, five years passed, and she continually working on this topic, and then gave us a keynote. So from his keynote, he gave some bullet point, and from his uh, her talk, he's, she still think there's a very strong correlation between attendance attainment and also student attendance gradually uh, reduced. So for example, from the semester one and until the semester two. So this gradually and gradually reduced. And also, so on the morning time, Perhaps is the worst time for student attendance. And also, if we upload the material and the beforehand, perhaps that will affect student attendance as well. So uh, from her study, and um, she found so generally and uh, student attendance for uh, attendance increased, improved, and uh, in past uh, five years. So that's the her and the conclusion and from his uh, keynote talk. So and we did something similar study and then we review the literature and try to see what is the best way to understand the student engagement. So and the cool published one paper in 2000, in 2007. So he divided the student engagement into different category, two main categories. And the first one called the behavior category. And basically this kind of the attendance, this kind of engagement, we call the engagement can be and the captured, captured for example, physical class attendance and how many times of students get access to blackboard. So and another category called an emotion category, and but in that paper, he did not give any solution, any suggestion, and uh, 
how we are able to capture this kind of engagement. So, and based on our research, and we tried to use some way to see, okay, so what is the possibility for us to incorporate our research into and this and the uh, issue, try to capture some kind of student engagement. So we come up with uh, sentiment analysis. This is our research area. So what is the sentiment analysis? Sentiment analysis sometimes also called subject analysis or opening mining. Basically, this kind of technology can be used to analyze large amount of tax document and then identifies the people openings or attitude to against a different subject or topics. So um, how we can use this one? So basically we can use this one, try to help us, try to help us to analyze some fun feedback document, for example, and then look at the whole student react to this kind of feedback doc document and then use some kind of student action to understand the emotion attitude of the student engagement. So this is the main approach and we used. So here is some bullet point and what we are interested. Basically we're interested to understand the sort of learning experience and their attitude to a particular program or module actually. The second part, we try to um, understand because the feedback sometimes is very uh, sensitive for students as well. So uh, the reaction on the feedback is uh, very important information for us. So how we are able to capture the student action from the the feedback, that is a very important part of Hohas as well. So based on the some kind of analysis result, and then we can see, can we use some the outcome to group students into the different the, co, co, um, the, the different group? And then see some students perhaps need to take a little bit early invention in order to um, improve their the learning and learning outcome. So this is basically the kind of the motivation and what um, how motivation for this piece of the work. So um, we have found system. This one was developed by uh, our colleague the Peter. Peter is here. So if you have any questions and uh, so you can ask um, these are some questions, Peter. Okay. So fan system um, basically is able to convert the feedback into uh, files and each file will be named into uh, email, student email address, and then release all of the files into students with a unique and the hyperlink. So um, the system is able to record the two time steps. One, when the feedback release to student and when student clicks the feedback. So this system has collected large number of module data and we just use the five years, the feedback data and then start to do some pre-processing by the end of the pre-processing and we have 3,300 feedback data for general study. In order to um, narrow down the scope of the study, and we clearly to see three modules and uh, three modules and across the different years and from year one to year four, and I try to understand the student and the reactions to the feedback. So um, this is the one an example, and just I mentioned, so here, and give us, the system gives us the when the, the feedback file has been released, and this timestamp, the clearly indicate when student clicked and the feedback. 
So, and we just based on the two time steps, um, try to understand so called the emotion and the engagement of student. So, what we did, so um, we collect the data and then we project the data into two dimensional representation, representation and then we divide this two dimensional representation into two four areas. So first areas and the indicate the student past, okay, but with the less attendance. So under this x axis represent so how much class a student physically attended. So y axis and represent the mark the student achieved. So from the here you can see under this part basically the past with the less attendance. And this one is a path with good attendance. This part indicates the past and with the less attendance. And this part and indicate the field with less attendance. Okay. So and the four different areas can be used a different the purpose of the for uh, our study for our study in order to um, improve the, our teaching and the, into the learning as well. So um, we do the further analysis, use the sentiment analysis. We look at the how many days and the students collect their feedback and then we divide the this the the time into on the four categories. And the first category and within the five days, for example, the second within the five to 15 days and the 20 day will be the mutual and the after 20 days where potential risk and the risk. So and we use this one to identify basically five group of students and then the five group of students give us the some kind of the ideas and how what kind of actions should we take? Should we take? So, and this is the um, the first part and uh, our research result. So, um, so how we use this one to support um, students. So, for example, once we have the clear the the group of students, and then we can take different actions. And in particular, for example, if we have two assignment and student reactions to first assignment are not good within the potential risk area and the categories, and then we can take some actions, take some actions. Okay. So, and another part because this system is ongoing um, system, so and widely used within the university and the, and Peter also have some ideas regarding and also based on the, some feedbacks regarding the what is the best time for us to release, for example, feedback to students, how this kind of time will affect the student reaction to the feedback. I think that also is the important part for our next for next step of research. So um, this is the first and the case study. Um, if you have any questions, and then so and we can have um, discussion by end of my presentation. And meanwhile, so you can and put some questions into the chat box as well. So second part I am going to talk about is the challenge of the chat GTP in assignment. So this one basically um, based on our MIC course, um, I'm the module co coordinator of the deep learning and uh, did quite a lot of research on the generative AI. The chat GPT is a one of uh, the topic and, uh, of our research. So um, I think the chat GPT already not new because it released at the end of the last year and already um, raised a lot of issues and the interest and the, to the different communities. Uh, 
Basically, we can use chat GDP to generate different things. For example, we can use chat GDP to generate the code, uh, generate the text and ISIS and the image and the 3D models and even include the music as well. So, and the chat GDP basically based on the data, the data come from the different sources and come, mainly come from the internet and come from the libraries as well. And they based on the data to train the model and then use that model to do different generation of the image code, the music as well. <clears throat> so, um, because it's the, the, it can be used to generate different things naturally, and we can use from teaching perspectives, we can use and it, for example, help us to generate some um, assignment, generate the feedback to student coursework. And the student also can use chat GTP to generate answers to their coursework, for example. So here and um, give you a little bit of background of one, mo one module and called deep learning. This is a standard 20 credit module and um, teaching hours and basically is uh, 24 and lectures and um, 30 practical sessions and six hours for tutorials. Independent study is 140. So because there's a standard model module, so there's a 200. Uh, hours uh, module. Okay. Um, so we look at the the specific uh, the, the assessment because this is uh, mainly uh, created during pandemic period. This is 100% of coursework. coursework. So the coursework divide the two parts. The first part is the writing assignment to take 50% and the second part also is the Write assignment. So, and I'll give you an example about the first assignment. So, the second assignment. Okay, so this is the second assignment. So, and uh, clearly to see what is the objective of this one and some specific task and require student to complete. Um, in order to understand how student use this one or use the GTP to complete this this kind of assignment. And I invited two students uh, from this course, uh, this AI course, and the one student and enrolled the beginning of this year, Mohammed and Haider Selim. So and the second one, uh, Mazen Osman, so he is from Egypt. He uh, involved the module study from last year, last year, okay. Two students and have uh, experience about the coursework and also have experience of using chat GPT. So um, the both students confirm they spend less than two hours to complete this coursework. And they also indicate if students don't have any experience about the use the chat GPT, so and they perhaps will use a few hours to complete. So um, based on the, uh, the result, and then we see so and their result, and perhaps they can get the 55, even 60% of the mark. So look at the original specification of this uh, the coursework. So how much time we expect the student to spend on this one? So for example, we perhaps expect students spend around the 40 hours, but now you can see students only use the two hours to complete this one, okay? So um, that is the significant challenges for us. So um, when we, Develop our coursework and um, assignment for student. So, and what kind of style or the, what kind of ways should we use? What kind of ways should we use? 
So uh, here is the answers from students. And you can see students directly and put the requirement of the assignment into the chat GPT and use this as a kind of prompt. And after that, students can get the answer so like this. This is the answer from the chat GPT. Okay. And the student also can require the code as well. So and um, based on whatever they get, and then so and students can generate the prompt to and uh, generate the code as well. So student did not tell me this code is working directly work or not, but the student tell me so they did not spend much time to make this one work. Okay. So what we learned, so chat GTP and the provides the good opportunities, not only from the teaching perspective and also from the learning perspective as well. So and the student can use chat GTP to and use their own way to read the questions and then to get answers and they can repeatedly and the risk questions to chat GPT and then get the answers. It doesn't matter what time they want to use it, as long as they have questions and they can use the chat GPT. So also, for example, for international students, if they have language barriers, they can use the chat GPT to have them to uh, do different things, in particular have them to complete and the assignment and the help to prepare the examination and the coursework that's um, what I already demonstrated. So that's the opportunities, but what is the, the challenges, the complexities and the chat GPT. So and we can see the main objective of the coursework or assignment will be check a exam student the critical thinking and uh, problem solving skills. However, if students use the chat GPT and uh, to create answers, use the chat GPT to create some ideas. So um, that means we are not able to achieve and what we predefined. Okay. So and also if a student directly use the chat GTP as an answer. So that involves the plagiarism, so also involve the misconduct as well related to the academic the integrity. So um, students can repeatedly use this one to and rely on use, rely on chat GPT. So that promotes the students lazy. Um, more things. So chat GTP also created some kind of disruptions to our teaching as well, to our teaching as well. So um, we initially designed the, our coursework, we specified the objectives. However, so when students use this kind of AI tools, so and they can get different answers. So and sometimes the generates and the answer even challenging to us as well, challenging to us as well. So and something related to ethic issues and the relate relate uh, on the rely on tech technologies to do different things basically. And that's the the challenges and the, from the generative AI tools when students use their use this kind of tool to help them and do learning to learning. So um, we also noticed um, some new advice from the quality assurance agency in UK. Um, <clears throat> So and this is basically and is kind of encouragement to uh, to encourage and um, from teaching perspective, from learning perspective, to use this kind of new technologies. So and for example, um, the, this st statement clearly to say chat GTP is very useful 
and it uh, provides a lot of opportunities for from the employer uh, employability perspectives and also um, pose a lot of challenges from the teaching perspective as well. So um, they also create the one seven principles regarding how to achieve the academic integrity integrity. So and really regarding the this kind of things actually is the whole community rather than individuals rather than individuals. So um, I provide the link here and I provide the link here so and you can have a look you can have a look. So basically that is the um some kind of the the guidelines from the QAA QAA so also from the different sources for example different university have different based on QAA create their own guidelines as well so um but so far and we don't have clear the the solutions and so the we encourage the has to use the chat use encourage students to use chat to complete their coursework or complete their teaching tasks or so that we encourage and uh, complete the stop and the student using this kind of AI tools. So and uh, now they come to the, the summary of the, my presentation basically as a lecture so we are facing new set of challenges which I already mentioned at the beginning. So and what extent should we do bring the research into the teaching and this is the, the big topic I think and today I don't have time to elaborate on our experience. I hope and we have a full opportunity to give you some details so from the curricular de design perspectives and from the employability perspectives and why we think the incorporate the research into teaching practice is the more important. So and we need to learn adapt to adopt the new emerging technologies, for example, particularly from the generative AI chat GTP, which I already demonstrated. And also giving current the technology enhanced learning environment. So and how we understand the student engagement, that will be the important part for us as well. So and uh, there are a number of ways to try to capture students engaged and uh, with their program study. But I think from our perspective, we think it's a really challenge to understand the emotion, the engagement for student the learning behavior, learning behavior. So, um, but the important part we are be here is and we need to put the student in trend central and this is a guideline, this is a strategy of the university, university. So, and we have to understand the student's digital learning experience in order to put that in the central. Okay, so this is the end of my presentation. So thank you very much for your attention. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Very nice theme to start with, because that's the way we seem to be going for the rest for the rest of these uh, sessions. So there's been a few questions come up in the chat here and there. Uh, Elizabeth, uh, you were asking a few questions. Would you like to join in? Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to sweat the technology. Yeah, um, do you know, uh, you were talking about um, the, in your first case study, the sentiment analysis, which I actually had never come across. But then I just Googled it quickly and loads of stuff came up. So that just shows my ignorance. But I really like that um, focus on the emotional attitude of students. So, uh, so that's very interesting. Um, could you say a little bit more about that? Yeah, um, 
I think the sentiment analysis that just I mentioned, the sentiment analysis, uh, sentiment analysis uh, is a big research area in artificial intelligence. So um, basically, underpin technology will be the machine learning. So um, so we can use machine learning to analyze large amount of the text data to identify student attitude. So uh, for our case study, and actually we don't have a large amount of text, and what we have, we only have um, time stamps. So we have um, what time we upload the feedback to students, and what time as a system collected the the student download their feedback. Okay, so this is clearly this is a time stamp. So, and the, some students, for example, we assume if some students engage their module study or program study, and they should react the feedback very quickly. So, if a student not engage the module study or program study, so a perhaps the reaction to the feedback is quite slow, quite slow. So that's the main um, important the the idea about the, the this approach. So we try to understand the, their reaction and then we group them into five categories. So for example, for this part, so basically student reaction good. So and uh, between and this period that period of time, so we think no any potential risk for student studies. However, if students not collect their feedback and uh, after 20 days, so and then we, if this is for first piece of the coursework, and then we need to pay more attention on the second piece of work. So we need to see why student reactions to slow. And uh, so this kind of slow gives us the clear ideas and we need to put more attention to this cohort of students. So I think that is the important the outcome of our research. 11, so it's okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's kind of reading quite, yeah, this emotional analysis in, in, in that response, which is an obvious one, actually. But yeah, that, that's an interesting one to pick up. Yeah. Thank you. So there's a few other little, there's been quite a bit of chat going on in the background. Would anyone else like to add any uh, questions at this stage? Yeah, um, can I? Yeah, so I, yeah. Uh, uh, should on here. Uh, just uh, an observation made uh, on the previous slide you are showing here uh, on the, pre uh, the, the previous one where you showed the attendance rate and the marks. Uh, yes. Looking at the scatter plot, I would say uh, there's no there's no correlation here between the attendance and the, the, the mark achieved. <laughs> would that be fair? So yeah, I think this is our research result. So um, compare this research result with uh, Liz, uh, Liz Byrne uh, from the Durham University. So and it's uh, quite different. So and we also, this is our continue uh, study as well. So um, you can see actually this is a nonlinear correlation. So nonlinear relationship. So and from this one is really difficult for us. There's a clear correlation between students attendance and uh, their achievement, their achievement. You are right. So um, this gives us an idea about, for example, how we understand the student engagement. Can we see this group of students? Because you can see they did not attend the class very well, but they still survived module study okay so what way they used what way they used to uh, engage with module study i think this is a good question so that's why we come up with another part so um, can we for example to clearly identify 
so-called emotion engagement. And that group of students actually, and if we use the emotion and the, the, the engagement as the, uh, the indicated indicator, so and can we see that group of students actually emotionally engage in module study very well? So actually, this is our further research the question question. So because there are so many connections from different perspectives, we haven't had a chance to look at how this group of students and uh, uh, the, their emotion emotion uh, engagement. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, was someone else raised their hand? I see. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for sharing these uh, interesting case studies. And my question about the slide in the second case study about the prompt that you use in ChatGPT. Uh, yes. Do you provide the student with a certain uh, a standardized prompt or you uh, give them the flexibility to use their own words? So um, because I try to um, understand how this is basically, um, I think in past uh, half year, six months, a lot of people to talk about the how to stop students use chat GPT, use whatever we uh, stop student directly use the chat GPT to provide the answers to assignment. So um, the the case study mainly try to understand the student experience. Mm -hmm. So I invited the two students, okay. So um the student so uh you can see the the student Two students actually mm -hmm. study the deep learning model, deep mm -hmm. module, module. Okay, they have the experience on this coursework, on this coursework. So, um, but they also familiar with, familiar with the the chat GPT. So I did not uh, provide anything to student. I just mm -hmm. uh, try to understand the student's experience. So what way student use, uh, to uh to uh, generate answers to the assignment. You can see from the, I did not see, I did not tell student how to do that. And then you see student directly take the, whatever I have mm -hmm. in the coursework as a prompt, as a prompt. I think mm -hmm. that is a good uh, indication. So, and if we clearly, for example, if, when when we design course work, so we need to take this factor into consideration. Try to avoid the student direct use, and whatever we specify in course work as a prompt. So I think that perhaps is one thing we need to learn. We need to learn. So um, you can see um, student directly and use this one. Use the what I specified in the in the course work and then to generate answers. And the two students use a similar way to generate answers. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anybody else got any burning questions at the moment? And obviously all this will not be the last word we have on chat GTP. I think it's just the start okay. way to go forward, really. Um, so I'm just going to remind people that we do have obviously some, um, the committee for ALT's special interest group is, um, open for invitations if you would like to join to become part of the committee there's a link in the chat and there's also it was a notice that went out by email this week so please feel free to uh, nominate yourself 
I don't know whether Richard would like to say something at this point, if he's still with me. I'm, st I'm still here. Um, yeah, I think it's it's just um, Elisabetta and myself um, have come to the end of our three-year term and we're looking for other um, people to come along and, and, and take on the baton and lead this um, much needed interest group forward. Um, I think regarding active running, but specifically, I think, around the technology challenges we're facing with, with artificial intelligence or generative AI, et cetera. Um, it's a, a fantastic time to come in and help shape the future direction of this group. So we're really looking for anyone who's interested in becoming involved as chair, co-chair, um, secretary, or even just member groups in FE, um, HE, school sectors. This is a much, very much across multiple sectors group. Um, so we're looking for anybody to come along and bring their experience and help share and shape where we're going to go forward with this. Um, but yeah, so please do put your name in, into the hat. You've got until January the 4th, I think, um, to do that. The, the, I'll just post the, uh, the link again in the chat for you um, so you can all see it. Yeah, I, um, I, I, okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> what did you just do, it, Elizabeth? Did you... Yeah, yeah, it's all right. More, the more the merrier, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, yeah, please get involved if, if if you have the time, or if anybody has ideas for webinars as well. Um, you, you, on our um, forum, there's there's other things you can submit and to get more involved with the group. So thank you, uh, and thank you to Yasin and colleagues for today's presentation as well. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, I think that's all. I think if no one's got any other questions, then we can finish on time, which is always good when people are in their lunch hour. Um, and I say thank you very much for doing the presentation. It's a very good way to start this new session for the for us. And a reminder to fill in if you wish to become part and also uh, not forgetting to look out for the next notice for the next uh, webinar. So uh, if if that's everything, then we'll say goodbye. <laughs>